going? Okay. So I'm really excited. I hope I hope I hope you are too. Um, I don't know. Maybe some of you are like, "What on earth are we getting ourselves into?" I have no idea. Um, but but I want to kind of give you some things to kind of set the stage for what's in store. And I think tonight there are some things that's going to help us kind of get going strong as we start um, the, the the trip. So. Before I get into everything, I just want you to know you may leave with more questions than answers, and that's okay. Uh, but the, there's a purpose behind the madness of these trips, and, and you'll see that a, as you get going, I promise you. Now, the idea for this trip was December of 17. Uh, Bert and I were talking about it earlier today. Um, Bert kind of asked me um, a question, you know, is, is, it, is it more, we had both been to Israel that year, was it more about being in Israel or was it more about unpacking lessons where you visually see things and make them come to life? And so we started thinking and praying through, God, what if we brought, for lack of a better term, Israel here? And we, we started teaching the way Jesus taught on location rather than being in buildings like this. And so that was kind of the beginning of, of, of that trip. Last year... We took a group um, on a five-day trip around Tennessee, and um, it, I think Tommy could tell you it was it was something else, right? It was mm -hmm. pretty pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. um, now we're gonna pack in five days to three, and part of that is it's hard to take off Monday through Friday for me. It's hard to take. I'm sure Joel, Tanya, it's. A, some of us, I mean, I, and so the thought is, what if we could make the experience a, a, a way for more people to, to experience it, for lack of, so, so, now, the name overall theme of the trip, if you haven't heard yet, the overall thing is the equip trip, okay, that's what we called last year's, that's the overall name of this year's, and the reason for that is, we are attempting to equip you with things that you can bring back and use in your walk and hopefully teach others and use in, in, in a lot of different ways. Now, this specific trip, the theme for this equip trip, we're calling it the I Am Tour. I Am. God's name, I Am. Exodus 3. I didn't ask you to bring Bibles tonight, but feel free if you have it. Exodus 3. Uh, I want you to, you can just listen to me, but Exodus 3 verse 10 says this, if I can get there. Therefore come now and I will send you to Pharaoh so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. God's talking to Moses and he says, Moses, I'm, I'm going to give you a job. Some of you may have heard this before, but if you unpack Exodus, Moses goes through a series of excuses. The first one is, you mean you want to use me? Me? He, he's, he asks another question. What if they don't believe me? He says something like, I, I'm really not capable, God. And he says it in his own way. I'm paraphrasing. And, and he says something like, God, just send somebody else, please. Now, I, I say that, but one of the questions that Moses asks God is, God, is, it, is this really you? How do, how do I know it's you? How will they know it's you? Here's what he says in verse 13. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I'm going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God furthermore said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, the Lord, the God of the, your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial name to all generations. Who is God? The, this is the I Am Tour. We're going to experience Him. Now, just so you know, I'm not, I'll save that for the trip. Turn to Psalm, if, you, if you've got your Bible, you don't have to, I'll read this one too. Psalm 910. This verse jumped off the page at me recently. And it became a verse 
that I've been wrestling with, and it's been a verse I've been pointing towards for this trip. Okay, here it is, Psalm 910. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. Know your name. That is that word of experiential know who God is. If you know who God is, you experience him. He says, you have no choice, but you're going to trust him. Because if you experience the character of God, you know who he is, you will trust him by nature. Because that's who God is. Now, that's, that is this trip in a nutshell. Okay? Now, what do you need? Let's kind of go through what you need. By the way, we're going to start out Old Testament. We're going to get a heavy dose of some Old Testament to begin the trip. You're going to get plenty of New Testament as well with some Old Testament mixed in even late in the trip. So you're going to get pretty much the whole Bible, uh, and that's kind of the idea. So what do you need? This is maybe where you want some notes. First thing is you need some shoes you can walk in, <laughs> some walking shoes. We're not going to do the RVL method where we hike 100 and something miles on the terrain in Israel, but there's going to be some walking involved. Okay, so wear some shoes that are, you know, you know, Ron, keep your high heels at home, okay? <laughs> Second thing, you you do need a notebook or something to take. Well, I, I struggle with this, okay? Let me, let me just tell you that because I want you to see and experience as much as possible. You know, um, sometimes we have our head down and writing so much that we miss what God's trying to teach us with our eyes. So, so I struggle because I like taking notes. I mean, I have notebooks full of notes at home. I have <laughs> iPad full of notes that I carry around, and I refer back to them. So I don't want to deprive that that of you where, you know, saying, hey, you can't have notes. But I'll say this, and, and just on that point, I, one of my favorite qu quotes about this comes from my favorite football player, Peyton Manning. Uh, he was asked about uh, giving advice to younger players when they watch game films. And here's what he said. He said, to ever watch film without a pen and paper in your hand is a complete waste of time. And I kind of subscribe to that. When God's teaching me something, if I don't have a pen and paper, if I don't have a place to write it down, I'm going to forget it. I, that's just the way my mind works. I'm already like, that's my brain. And so I've got to write stuff down. So I'm not saying, but here's the thing. For Jews, you don't take notes. When I was in Israel, RVL said the very first day, we are so Western. You all want notepads. And I'm not, tell and he said, I'm not telling you not to. But he said, I was not allowed to bring pencil and paper when I came out on location, ever. He said, you are not allowed. If you're with a rabbi, they want you to experience and see everything. And if you have your head down, you will miss something. Now, a couple of ideas for you. When I went to Israel, I took this a little recorder, and I didn't take basically any notes. I've got a few pages from like the first day when I was still writing some stuff, but I, then I was hot and sweaty, and I was like, let me just record everything, because I was already recording it anyway. When I go back and listen to the lessons, even two years later, you know where I am? I'm right back there where he was teaching. I can see him. I, I, I know where I'm sitting. I'm back experiencing it. When I read about things I've learned, I'm usually, I can't remember where I even was when I wrote that down. When I listen to it, I'm there. And I'm just, I'm just telling you, one idea, you don't have to do this, you don't have to be like me, <laughs> but one idea is, instead of writing everything down, you could record it. I listen to and from work every day to something. And I've listened to my Israel lessons over and over. Okay, so there's one idea for you. Another thought is this. The way I teach is I have everything written down. That's just the way I teach. I can't do like Bert where he has like three words and he makes a sermon out of it for an hour and a half. I can't do that. I have to have things written down. So it comes to your benefit when at the end of the trip, I can say, what's your email address? Let me send it to you. You can have every bit of my notes. Don't have to hit every, but what if God tells you something while I'm speaking? Those are the notes I think you need to take where, you know, I may be talking about one thing and God brings something to your mind that you're thinking, I don't need to forget that. Write it down. Okay. So, so that's just a couple, couple things. Don't, 
my experience, experience him on this trip, whatever it takes. If that means take notes and you'll experience him better, do it. But if that means find a recorder or just get my notes, I'm fine with that too. Okay, three. We're getting there, I promise. I know you're already going home. Bible. You need a Bible. Four. Backpack. Every seat on the bus at this point looks to be filled. There's not a lot of luggage space, okay? So, pack light. Um, I would ask no more than one backpack, okay? Even bonus points if spouses can do it together. You don't have to do that, okay? Y'all can each have your own backpack, but if you pack really light and you can get it together, I'll give you bonus points. Okay? I don't know what that means. So but. the ladies have to leave their makeup kits at home. Right? Hey, I, I, I'm not I'm not setting that line. Now, <laughs> toiletries obviously is another thing. Obviously, you'll need something like that. Uh, but but um, pack light. There's a reason for that. You'll see as we start the trip. I'm going to tell you part of the reason why I wanted you to pack light. Okay. So pack light, not just for space purposes, but that's part of our trip. The next one is. I don't know if many of you have like one of the small chairs, like the, the tripod chairs that I used to take those to golf tournaments where we'd have a little tripod chair. Mm -hmm. Didn't have, you know, anyway. Um, but Tommy has a little one too that he got at Walmart for like 20 bucks that's, that's like that long, right? And I'm not talking about the big ones in the sacks because we don't know where we're going to put those. But if you have something small, we're going to be on location. Some spots will have built-in seating. Great. Some spots may not. If you're okay for standing, if you're okay for sitting on the ground, fine. But if you need a little chair, bring it. Uh, that might make it more comfortable, okay? So, so um, small chairs. Next is sunscreen. We're hoping that it is sunny and that God shines his face down upon us during this trip. So you may need some sunscreen or a hat, but on the other side of the coin, there's a possibility it could rain. Who knows, you know? Uh, more than likely, we'll have about 20 straight days of no rain and then three straight days as we do the trip. That's just how it usually goes. But um, for the rain, what I did for, for for Israel is I just packed a really light poncho type deal that I could throw on if it was, of course, it doesn't rain in Israel. Let's not kid ourselves. But just in case, you might want to have a little poncho. I don't care if you have a little umbrella, just not the big golf umbrellas, you know, where we don't have any place to put it. Um, and then again, like I said a minute ago, maybe a hat if you need that. Um, money. You will be responsible for three meals. The other meals will be covered. So we'll have a meal before we leave on Friday. Um, you will pay for Friday night's meal. Uh, e uh, we'll eat at a hotel uh, breakfast. Um, for lunch, you will pay for dinner. You will pay on Saturday. And then we've got Sunday's lunch. Okay, so, so you will pay for three meals. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as other money, I mean... There's not going to be souvenir shopping on the trip, sorry. Uh, so I, I don't think you're going to need a whole lot. So um, that's just, and if, and if some of you, if any of you want to bring a couple snacks, that's completely fine. Well, yeah, it may be kind of a long day, uh, but it's fine if, if, if a couple of you want to, especially if it's like um, homemade stuff, that's fantastic. You know, Tommy, <laughs> I love your homemade chocolate chip cookies. Um, okay, now the last thing. <laughs> slice and bake um, the last thing I'm going to go ahead and, and give you one of the teachings we will be doing at some point on the trip we will mikvah I'm just telling you Okay, we, we, we did a sermon series about mikvah you're going to experience mikvah and for those of you that have your spouse you will do it together Okay. so we need you need something that you can get wet in whether it's a bathing suit, and you're not, we're not all going to do it together. Or, or, you know, we're going to have, you're going to have privacy, that sort of thing. But you need something you can get wet in, whether it's whatever you want to wear on that. Um, you don't need to bring a towel, okay? So no worry. All you need is something you can mix that in. If you need a copy of the book to familiarize yourself, we do have extra copies. Of the yeah, book. I, I, I will do a short thing on it beforehand, but it, it, I'm telling you guys. It is a powerful, powerful thing. Powerful. And I think you're going to see it when, when we do it. Now, the other thing with that, along with something to get wet in, is you might want like some flip-flops. Because where we're mikveh-ing, um, you may have a few rocks. So you, you may want some flip-flops. Or when I was in Israel, 
Uh, we did it at a spot in the Jordan River. And I'm telling you, I, it's like walk. I mean, it was like I was on Bridgestone Arena ice. I couldn't, I couldn't stand up. You know, it looked like I'm, anyway, like I had some of the sweet wine before I got out there. But I get out there, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. So I was, we're all falling down, all these youth. And I was like, well, at least it's not just me. While RBL's teaching, he's falling down. You know, it was quite humorous. But anyway, so half flip, you might want flip flops. Um, now, last couple things, and, and then we'll, you know, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer anything you have. But two more things I want to tell you. Guys, like RVL told me when we were going to Israel, he said, I plan to utilize every second I have with you, okay? I don't want to waste a moment. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of teaching. Get rest before you come, if you can. There's going to be a lot of teaching. I'm going to teach a lot on the bus even, okay? That may be hard for some of you. I know Julia is like, Gosh, I can't even, I can't take notes on a bus. I can't do this. And I'm fine. Like, I, we can drive and I can do whatever I need to do, read or whatever. Or she gets car sick. Now, you don't have to take notes. Again, I'll tell you, I'll give you every note I have. But also know while you're on the bus, if you want, you might want your Bible where you can grab it. And if you can take notes or you want to on the bus, just know I'll be teaching. Okay, I'll be teaching on the bus. Um, there is a lot to cover. I've been working on these things for several weeks solid now. I don't, God's going to have to give me wisdom of what to give you and what, because I want to give you it all. I want you to have all of it, but God's going to have to give me wisdom on what to leave out uh, because I don't know if we'll have time to get to all of it, okay? But I want to utilize every second I can. Now, I want to give you time maybe to process some things. So I may not talk every second, but... At the same time, I want to make this a impactful, uh, impactful weekend. Uh, last thing, I'm going to go ahead and give you some homework. It's very easy. Very easy. Our theme verse for the trip is Hebrews 13.8. Hebrews 13.8. Very easy. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. We're going to recite that verse a few different times. So... Again, that won't take long to memorize, so it's very easy homework. Um, but that's going to be important. I'll go ahead and give you what we have in store a little bit based on that verse, because that way you can prepare your mind. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Friday, we're going to talk about what he was yesterday. Who was he to Israel? Who was he to the old, in the Old Testament? He's never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can learn a lot, and I find as Christians, we often focus mainly on the New Testament. I want to bring out some things that you may have never seen before, never heard before, that I think is going to challenge you in your walk. Friday. Saturday, God is the same today. We're going to talk about who we are, what we struggle with, and what it looks like to trust Him. Who is Yahweh? That's His personal name. It's not some distant name. It's the most common name that he says about himself in the Bible over 8,000 times. He says, use my personal name. Not Adonai, not, uh, yes, you can use those, but my name is Yahweh. And then Sunday, we're finishing, he's the same forever. And we're going to talk about what does it look like to invest in the future. It's not just about us. It's about the next generation knowing his name as well. So that's our trip in a nutshell. What questions do you have that I can answer? I'm not going to tell you where we're going. Go ahead. Who's driving? Who's driving? Was that was that a volunteer? Oh, Bert. Bert's volunteers. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. What time do we meet? Okay. What? I'm driving Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. They they expect him to preach or something on Sunday, so he'll have to come back. I've but come back but, here but he'll Saturday be there with us. Uh, and so if, if somebody can just drive Sunday morning, that's all we need. Or Sunday, we'll be so so time frame. How many of you are doing BBS? Because we're not going to leave till after it's over. Uh, by the way, I'm not. I'm not um, we're going to. What do y'all know? What time it's going to end on, on on Friday? Are you the main teacher, or are you? Not on Friday. I'm not. I'm because they have a closing uh -huh. ceremony thing that 
is what, 11.45? So it'll probably be done by... Closing assembly is at 11.20. Okay. So, I mean, usually 11.30 is when it's supposed to be over. Okay. So by 11.30, they're sending kids out. So, so here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to eat here, okay, and then... We're going to load up and leave probably. It, it's no surprise that they have pizza here that day for the yeah. teachers. We're going to buy extra so that we can have pizza here and that, immediately go. That way we can get going. We've got we, we need to get going as quickly. On the bus quick, so. Now, just so you know, on, on that bus ride, well, very we're, we're going to, there's going to be a lot of teaching as we leave because I've got to set the stage. I've got to set the stage. There's going to be a lot of teaching on that Friday bus ride. Um, so we're going to get back Sunday and it, it could be, it could be anywhere from, I would say one thirty to three is my guess. Okay. It's not going to be late. Um, it's going to be kind of after lunch though. We're going to eat lunch together. Um, we're going to have one last thing together and then, and then we'll be ready to go. So we'll be back. We're going to, we'll finish here. All, you know, we'll bring the, you'll be picked up. However, you leave your car here or whatever you want to do. But yeah, we're going to be here. So. Other questions? Does that confuse you at all? Yeah. Are you excited? Please say yes. 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 You want to tell them why they don't know where they're going? You don't know where you're going, and I'll share this more too on Friday. But part of the reason why you don't know, um, you know, when we go to Israel, I don't know where we're, or I will this time. But last time I had no idea where we were going. Uh, any day. Um, all I knew is where we were staying in the hotel just in case there was an emergency. So he gave us the telephone numbers for people back home, but he did not give us anything. And the reason why is he wants you to learn what it means to trust the rabbi. You put all your trust into your leader, into your rabbi, and you say, I'm yours. You do what you want with me for this period of time. So that, that's kind of the thought process behind why we do what we do. There is a method to the madness, like I said earlier. And uh, you'll see, I think, by the end of the trip, hopefully Tommy can back this up, that it's a powerful thing. So I'll share more about that as we go, too. Any other questions before we get out of here? Somebody want to close this? Hey, let me just ask one thing. For sure. We, we got a, <clears throat> I talked to Ron, and I talked to <clears throat> two or three more. Tina. But we got a chance at the summer school which is just one month long. We got a chance at the summer school to impact some kids. And she called me today and 